I'll teach you how you can make a 2.5D platformer in Unreal Engine 5. 2.5D can have many different definitions, but in this case it means a 3D game with 2D gameplay. Our character will only be able to go left, right, up and down, but has no access to the depth of the map. Let's get started making our 2.5D platformer. Create a new project from the third person template and make it a blueprint project. Click on the player start on your map to have the arrow gizmo show up, so we can identify the axis directions. The red arrow is the x-axis and the main axis for our game. The blue one is the z-axis and used for jumping and falling. The green y-axis won't be used by our character, therefore making the gameplay two-dimensional. But right now our character can still freely move around and also move the camera freely. Let's start by restricting the movement. Open up the content drawer, go into third person, blueprint and open up the third person character blueprint. We now want to rotate the camera boom to look at the character from the side. Just press the E key to go into rotate mode while the gizmo is active. But if you try to change the rotation, you see that it doesn't get applied. Remove the check mark from use pawn control rotation, so we can take control of the camera. Now rotate the camera so we're looking at our character from the right side. We'll have to do adjustments to this later, but for now just do it this way. When starting the game, you can see that the camera will now always look at the character from the right, which is great. However, we still have too much freedom of movement and can run in any direction. Open up the character blueprint and go to the event graph. We can now delete these two sections that allow us to control the camera. Further down you can see the nodes that control our movement. There is one event for forward and backward movement and one event for right and left movement. Since we only want to use the A and D key, we don't need the forward backward event anymore but we can reuse the other nodes. Just bring the right-left event upward and connect it to these nodes instead. Then delete the old nodes at the bottom. Now we can only walk to the left and right. When you press W or S, nothing happens, which is exactly what we want. But the camera still keeps on flipping directions together with our character. Go into the blueprint again and select the camera boom. Click on Rotation and you'll see the option to set this to World. Now the camera boom is using absolute rotation and isn't affected by the character, which is again exactly what we want. When our character switches directions, you can see that it turns around looking away from the camera. However, in games like Donkey Kong, he turns looking towards the camera, which just looks better. As far as I know, there is no way to change the turn direction without messing with engine code. So the best solution is to just put the camera on the opposite side of the character. That's why I mentioned before we might have to change this angle. The controls are inverted right now, but the character is now properly facing the camera when turning around. While we're at it, we can also change the speed at which we turn to make it a bit more snappy. Select the character movement component and search for rotation. Under the rotation rate settings, we only want to affect the Z value and change it from 500 to 720. The higher the value, the faster will turn. 720 means it takes half a second for a full turn. Now this is looking a bit better. We can now easily fix the control inversion by just rotating the player spawn by 180 degrees. An issue that isn't immediately apparent is that even if we can only walk left and right, we might still be pushed into the foreground or background through physics. A simple way of showing this is to just prepare a slope and angle towards us. Then have the character slide on it. This allows us to move off our predetermined lane through physics, which is something that shouldn't happen for a 2D side-scroller. But there's one simple setting we need to change. In the character blueprint, select the character movement component. Search for constraint and check constraint to plane. We only want to constrain movement on the y-axis, so put in 1.0 for the y. Now if we go on the slope, we'll start sliding, but we won't go forward or backward under any circumstances. So you won't run into issues where your character will go off the path that you designed. The next thing we want to do is make our character feel more like a platformer character. The default values for the character movement component are very floaty and don't feel good. Now they've been tweaked a bit with the new Unreal Engine 5 template, but we can still do a lot better than that. 
In the character blueprint select the character movement component. Then adjust the gravity scale. I'll set it to 3.0. This will make our character fall faster and feel a bit more responsive. But we need to adjust the jump power to the new gravity. On the character movement component set the jump Z velocity to 1200. Then set max walk speed to 800 to make the character faster. Now this already feels much more like a platformer, but of course you can spend much more time polishing this and playing around with these values. Let's keep on improving the camera since this is a very important part of a 2D side-scroller. One more thing we can easily change is the camera distance. In the character blueprint select the camera boom. In the details search for target arm length. I want to set this to 550 to have the camera a bit further away. But at this point having the camera directly attached to the character is starting to limit us. Creating a separate camera actor will allow us to tweak many more things. If you look at Donkey Kong Country Returns for example, you can see that the camera doesn't move up and down with the character which lets us see the stage better and is better suited for platforming. Setting up a separate camera actor is actually very simple and something I also did for my beat'em up. Create a new blueprint of type actor. I'll call it BP underscore camera manager. Go into your character blueprint and select the camera boom and camera. Press Ctrl and X to cut the components out. Then go into the camera manager blueprint and select the default scene route. Press Ctrl and V to paste the components here. We want to save a reference to the owning player, so let's create a new variable. Call it follow target. And set the type to character object. We want to set instance editable to true and also expose on spawn. When we start the game now we still don't have a camera though since we first need to spawn it. Go into the character blueprint and add the begin play event. Then call spawn actor from class. As the class select our bp underscore camera manager. Split the transform struct. For the location we can just get actor location to pass through the location of our character. Follow player is the variable we exposed before and here we just have to pass self. Then get player camera manager for index 0. Call set view target with blend here to set this as the new active camera. The new view target should be the camera manager we just spawned. When playing you can see that we now have a camera again. However there are still a lot of things we need to take care of. Let's first make the camera follow the player again. In the blueprint create a new function and call it update camera pause. Call set actor location. Then V interp to to smoothly update the position instead of just snapping to it. The current vector is get actor location. Target is the actor location of the follow target which is our player. For delta time, get world delta seconds. For interp speed, let's just use a hardcoded value of 5 for now. We now need to call this function on every frame, so go to the tick event and call update camera pause here. The camera now smoothly follows the character with camera lag we can easily edit. But we still get this issue sometimes where the camera is inside of our character. This can easily be fixed by disabling do collision test on the camera boom. Now you might get situations like this where foreground objects are blocking your view. 
You could make custom collision channels to only do collision tests with the stage objects and not the character. However, I believe you should build your stages for a 2D side scroll to not have blocking objects like this in the first place. Now our camera still follows the character up and down, so let's take care of this. In the update camera pause function, we want to cut the connection to the target vector. And then split the struct pin. Also split the pin on the location of the player. Then add a get actor location node and also split the pin. For the X and Y, we use the values from the follow target. For the Z, we just use the value from get actor location, basically just passing the current value again and preventing it to be changed. Now the camera won't move up and down with the character, similar to how it works in Donkey Kong Country Returns. If you want to take this a step further, you could maybe use a spline or a rail of sorts to decide the height of the camera throughout the level, but that's out of scope for this video. Let's make this easier to toggle on and off though. From the target Z we can create a select node. Then add both the Z values from our get actor location. Set the wildcard to boolean and promote this to a variable called lock height. Now we can easily toggle this on and off depending on what we want for our game. While we're at it, let's also turn the interp speed into a variable. I'll also change this value to 7 to make the camera follow with a bit less lag. We can now also easily add a camera offset. Now we need to disconnect these nodes first and then combine the struct pins here again. Here we can now use an add node to combine two vectors. For the top one we split the pins again and do the same thing as before. For the bottom we want to get the forward vector off the follow character and add an offset to it. We can then also turn this into a variable to make it easy to update. When we play now, you can see that the character is now not in the middle of the screen anymore, but we have an offset like in Donkey Kong that we can easily update. There is one issue though when we look towards the camera, since the offset zooms out the camera. Let's fix that. Now we just need to split these pins as well and then just not connect the Y to let it zero out and not change. Now we're at a great starting point you can use for many different types of 2D side scrollers. As a little bonus let's create a simple enemy you can jump on and destroy. Create a new blueprint of type character. I'll call it BP underscore enemy. Here I just want to add a sphere. Set the material to one with a red color. And set collision to no collision. Now just update the capsule half height and radius to better fit the size of the sphere mesh. We now want to make the enemy move slowly, so go to the tick event and add movement input. Set the direction to 1.0 on X to move forward. Then on the character movement component set the max walk speed to something slow like 30. When you place the enemy in the world you can see it slowly moves forward. But if we block its path with our character, you can again see it's being pushed onto another lane. 
Again, go into the character movement component and look for constraint to plane. Activate the setting and set the Y to 1.0. Now even if we block the enemy, it won't be pushed onto another lane. Currently if we jump on it, we just bounce off. Now there are many ways to go about detecting when we stomped on an enemy, but we'll implement the simplest one. Go into the blueprint of the player. Then look for the function override for the on landed event. Here, break the hit result and find the hit actor. Cast this to BP underscore enemy. Then destroy the enemy actor. After that, call launch character to give our player a little bounce, like you always see in platformers. We can use a vector up node to get the up direction and then multiply that. Change the pin to float. I'll use a value of 1700 here. This can then be turned into a variable to easily be updated. Now when we jump on the enemy you can see that it's destroyed and we get a little bounce. At this point you can just go through the free assets in the marketplace and find something nice to build your levels. Or maybe also get assets from somewhere else. And this is a simple thing I put together. However you can expand it from here and with enough work turn this base into a full game. You can check out my video about how I made a spiritual successor to Donkey Kong Jungle Beat using many of these techniques.